Okay, so dear Dharma practitioners, we're going to start our session now and be comfortable yourself and relax your body and your right palm on your left and neck head straight in one line. And gently close your eyes and let your whole body weight go down and focus your mind to this bell sound and follow the sound. So while you're focusing to the sound mentally, Relax your body, relax your mind, and relax your breathing with your thoughts. Do nothing extra. Namo tasa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhasa Homage to the blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, keep relax your body and bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes three times and say Sopatveva, oh may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think, we gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable, may my breath be more smooth, may no difficulties come to me. May all the success come to me. Also think for a moment. This is the last moment we are spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment observing the sensation of your inhalation exhalation. And then later observe the the sensation in permanent unsatisfactory nature and selflessness. So mentally relax your body step by step. Relax your head. Relax your forehead. Relax your eyebrows. Relax your eyes. Relax your ears. Relax your nose. Relax your upper lip. Relax your lower lip. Relax your chin. Relax your whole face muscles. Relax your teeth and relax your tongue. 
relax your mouth. Relax your throat and relax your neck. Relax your shoulders, arms, elbow, forearms, palms, fingers, fingertips. Relax your whole back muscles and relax your spine. Relax your chest and relax your abdominal muscles. Relax your lungs, relax your heart, relax your liver, relax your kidneys, relax your gallbladder, relax your pancreas, relax your small intestine. Relax your large intestine. Relax your abdominal organs. Relax your butter. Relax your thigh. Relax your knee. Relax your calf muscles. Relax your foot and relax your toes. Relax your whole body muscles, tendons, ligaments, bone, bone marrows and whole skeleton. Release the tension in your mind and keep relax your face muscles. Just bring your attention to your whole body and observe head to toes and see. Following inhalation, exhalation, how your body moving up and down. Bring your attention to in front of your nose and your upper lip area. Deeply and gently breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. Just follow the sensation and recognize this is inhalation, this is exhalation. Do nothing extra. So allow your inhalation, exhalation to happen itself and recognize it without judging, without commenting, without interfering. This is rising, this is falling.
If your mind go here and there, bring it back again and again. Follow the entire continuation of the inhalation and exhalation, knowingly this is the beginning, this is the middle, this is the end. Also, you may experience some inhalation, exhalation become longer, shorter, heavy, soft, warm, cold. Just recognize it. Just keep your attention to only the sensation and see how it change and recognize the in impermanent, unsatisfactory nature and selflessness. Within the sensation, whatever you recognize,
whatever you take as experience for the moment, let everything change moment by moment. Bring attention to your body. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also, as far as you can, through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this, with clear intention, mentally 
repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe and may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are frail or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourselves and send it as a light and expand the capacity. To your backside. your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. to all six directions at once. Like the moon, the sun, spread the light, spread the energy, without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself 
May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So dear Dhamma friends, when it comes to meditation practice sometimes, it feels very difficult. And it, uh, and the mind is kind of like uh, struggling. Actually the meditation technique or the meditation is not difficult. The very reason why that we experience because mainly in day to day our mind that whatever the pattern we develop in our mind is going to, to change. So that change, it's kind of like uh, bringing kind of like uh, discomfort. That discomfort, mostly we'll see it through the, the, the meditation. And then we think practicing meditation is difficult. Actually practicing meditation is not difficult. But the thing is, in day-to-day -day life, the pattern that we already develop is strong. So that's why little by little, same like how the, how the, the plants grow, little by little, you have to allow your mind to nourish with the practice. So you cannot push too much. And also you cannot let go. You cannot give up. You develop the consistency and at the same time, you don't keep any resistance. So that way you allow your heart to become little by little, little by little, to get out of the all other mental activities and come to an empty moment. So becoming empty is it ever it make you available for anything. And that make you strong because we are mostly in life, if you look very carefully, in life, we mostly precondition our everything. And then we ready to go with that only. But when you become completely empty, there is no pattern, there is no method, there is no habit. So then your mind become available for anything. That is the, the, the most important part you get. You can go to any direction. And also that itself, that freedom, once you come to that empty moment, the, the freedom, whatever you experience in that moment, that experience also, you're not going to hold or collect. So then you, you get out of the collective nature also. So then naturally you're ready to experience anything. Why that we like to experience only the good 
because because in that experience we we like to hold clinging but just imagine when you new become empty when you have the empty mind and you just experience without clinging and you don't collect the memory so then the good or bad both action it is just a moment so then you are not afraid even for any negativity to to face why because you're not going to hold it it's just the the moment that is what through practice you have to develop in deeply in your mind because when you able to to develop that empty moment with the clarity without clinging or resisting holding any experience you it's okay for you so but the thing is it is just not the idea just by believing thinking about it appreciating appreciating it you cannot fulfill that you have to practice you have to allow little by little little by little your mind to to grow so in that process it is not the the knowledge that we develop in day to day life this is completely different that is the important thing because in day to day life to maintain or to study or to work we we of course we need a knowledge and to have a very conventional life with others we have to have a certain understanding but that understanding and deeply that this understanding is totally different because that understanding you go with something you already you already have a path to to walk you go with that It's like when you go to workplace and they say, "Okay, do this, 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 like that way." So then you go, keep doing like that way. That's why we become kind of like a machines. And if you look every day yourself at your home, just if you have the bird view regarding your own life, you will see the same way you go to sleep, and even the same kind of. you know the way you move your body when you go to sleep and while you sleeping and uh, you can ask from your parents or ask from your husband or wife how you move at night in a certain time period you do the same kind of things and sometimes you sleeping and talk in same kind of things you you know at you know, maybe midnight you start to to talk. and then when you wake up the same way observe yourself put a camera nowadays you can buy a, you know camera and put it there and just record your your life not about others just look yourself one day enough for you you will understand oh otherwise have a bird eye view you know view regarding yourself you will see and same way you wake up and same way you get out of the bed same way you go to the bathroom same way you brush the teeth and the same you know tooth brush same tooth paste many many years maybe but you 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 know the branded hijack you then in the shower the same way at the same time period you know the same movements sometimes it's you know it's a kind of like a photocopy machine every day is a photocopy machine you you go if you take 100 years and you the the one year if you think oh i live one year and then you collect it every day that one years and you look from the the top your own life how it moves it's kind of like a photocopy machine you know the same thing you keep repeating 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 that's that's it happened through the sansara you know the, the through entire you know the journey it's keep happening maybe little little you know the outside things change 
Why this? Even you do the same thing, why you cannot do it in a, with the very clear, fresh, open mind? Then it becomes very complete new. I tell you one example. When you eat, like as example, whatever the, the bread or the rice or you know chapati or, or burrito or anything, whatever you eat, okay. So you giving to other person every day the same food, same food, same food. And then after a few days, that other person look at the plate and will tell, oh, we eat this yesterday, day before yesterday. Why we eat this every day? See, that he not eating the, the food on, on the plate. He eating that all food, that whatever in the previous days that he is eat in, in, in his mind. He eating that food with this. So if you, you know, when you have the hunger, you ate that and that finish. And then in this very moment, it is very fresh, new, you know, in this very moment. So why you, why you come to a point to collect uh, that memory and put it to this moment? Because this is a habitual pattern mentally that we keep doing. Can you separate that everything and this moment is a very new moment? You know, the, the food is, you know, the, it is new and it is not the same. Maybe you think it is kind of like the same. It is not the same. It's, a, it's completely, it has a different journey. You didn't see it. But you cannot catch it. You are, why? Because you are in another world. You cannot catch that, the freshness, the newness, the, the bliss within the, the moment that you have. So then you complain. So everything the same. So then all remember this in this journey, in the practicing meditation, is a different way you get out of that path and you develop a completely different path. So you have to do it little by little, little by little, slowly. And when you do it, only thing is develop the clarity. Moment by moment, moment by moment, clarity. One time Buddha gave us uh, the uh, gave us sutta. Uh, the, the, that sutta name called Nikattakaya Sutta. The Nikattakaya, Nikattakaya Sutta is kind of like uh, this body and mind, how you maintain and where you keep it. And uh, there are poor kind of people. So, one is Nikattakayo Anikatta Chitto. So, Nikattakayo means there sometimes you, you like to be alone. You like to stay away from things. So, Nikattakaya means you, you becoming alone. Kaya is body. Nikata is a kind of like separating from things. And mostly, and when you look for practice in a spiritual level, you can explain this in a conventional level and you can explain it in a spiritual level. So conventional level in, in day to day life, sometimes you, you like to be alone physically. Yeah, but your mind is so busy with something. And that in, when it comes to spiritual interpretation of this sutta, sometimes people like to go to forest, stay in the forest. And even the poor, poor forest monks, you know, people appreciate them and they more respect 
forest monks and because they mostly practice meditation. And so here what it say, and sometimes people like to go to retreat centers and stay away from everything. So in this sutta, what the Buddha said, Nikatta Kayo, Anikatta Chitto. Maybe your body is in close to the forest, in the forest, with the forest, but your mind in greed, hatred, delusion, anger, jealousy, with that. So just wherever the body is, not important when it comes to spiritual practice. It directly talk about the mind. So the condition of the mind is the most important part. But sometimes we like to be alone, separate, and we think that separate when we alone ourselves, oh, it is good. But sometimes look, mostly when people get angry, what is most people does? You know, go and you know close the door and stay away. See, physically they stay away. But in mind, you know, it's a kind of like a, you know, going roller coaster. It's kind of like a nuclear bomb, you know, in mind. And so when you get disappointed, so you stay away. And sometimes even you don't eat. You know, so in, in, in spiritual practice also, maybe you, you practice one meal per day, you know, and but how about when you get angry, when you get mad, you know, you don't eat maybe. But that doesn't mean it giving any kind of practice to you. See, the, the action, the, the same kind of action, but see the condition of the mind. So, anikatta kayo, uh, nikatta kayo, anikatta chitto. So, the body is in the forest, but the mind is in kind of like in the city. So, in the city here means the busyness and the greed, hatred, delusion, anger, jealousy. So, like that. So, the mind is there. And for some people, anikatta chitto, nikatta kayo. And the, they are in the city, having a, a, with the very busy people, you know, but their mind is like in the forest. Calm, rely, loving kindness, compassion, generosity and the, the wisdom so like that and uh, the physically maybe they don't go that much to to temple or visiting monks but the mind is completely different but physically, they are in a you know, very busy place. And the third person, Anikatta Kayo, Anikatta Chitto. There are some people, it's kind of like the, the body and mind, the both with the greed, hatred, anger, jealousy, so like that, full of darkness with them. So, and another person, Nikatta Kayo, Nikatta Chitto. They are in the forest. The mind also, with the loving kindness, compassion, generosity, wisdom. So they practice really that way. So this kind of people with us. Why I bring this sutra like this way? So in your life, and I'm going to give a different analogy regarding this sutta. And you know, home owners, homeless people. And everywhere, mostly homeless people. There are some people 
they have homes. They are homeowners. But they live like homeless people. They live like homeless people. I don't need to explain how the homeless person's character. They are a, they they are homeowners. They they have a home, but they live like homeless people. And there are homeless people. Even in that homeless situation, they live like homeowners. So that means, you know, there are some people, even when they have a little hut, they keep it very clean, you know. And even I have seen some flowers, they keep a little bit, you know, around them, flower pots. And they keep, you know, every day morning, if you go to Los Angeles, there are some people, you know, early morning, they wake up and, you know, clean their, their place. And also they help for other people. And I know one homeless person here, you know, next here close by in this park. And I used to talk to this guy, and and he told me there is uh, one person in that homeless community. They also have community. They have kind of like a boss, leader, and they listen to him. And there is a person, and he have you know toolbox. And so whatever the you know the cell phone or if the, anything that a little radio, if anything breaks down, he picks it. He picks for, I asked, he, he charge anyone? No, no, no. He help, he, he, he help all that, everybody in that, that homeless community. Even when they don't, if somebody don't eat, he give his food also. And if uh, somebody need emergency for some money, little bit, and sometimes he give that money also. So he's a homeless person, but look, he's generous. He has the compassion. You know? And sometimes that uh, when, they, when they see some trash, you know, and they collect it and they put it to the trash can, they, they like that. There are some. So see, home, home owners sometimes, they have the home, but they, they live inside that, kind of like homeless, always fighting, you know, blaming each other, the anger always, you know, fear other people, or everybody afraid to live inside the house sometimes with that person. No. So it's like that. But when you have the, you are homeless, but still, you know, you have a kind of like, a, you live like a home. And there are some people homeless, physically homeless and mentally also they homeless. There are some people and there are some people so they have their homeowners physically, materially they have house and mentally also, you know, they, they have that and they develop their life with that. They nourish their life with that character and take caring as a family, living as a family, think as a family, you know, helping each other, husband, wife, and sometimes, you know, even that the people have husband, wife, when they go to, they, when they go to go out, sometimes they are friends, used to remind that the other person, hey, you married, hey, you have a wife, hey, you have a husband, remember? So like that they have to re remind, why? Because they forget. They get lost in their, you know, this emotional world. But when you become a homeowner, you're not like that. You take it as a responsibility 
you take it as a bliss. You go with it. So then remember this body and the mind, the both that we need this both, but don't separate it. To bring that both together, that's why we practice the tranquility meditation. That is the main thing. So in day-to-day -day life, it is not just sitting. In day-to-day -day life, remember yourself. So develop the body and mind together with any action that you do. So whatever the action you do, bring your mind to that action. So mindfully, you perform your action. When you develop that little by little, little by little, what will happen? Your mind is start to become more clear, sharp, strong. And with that, then you can go to the, the higher level of practice vipassana. Because in that vipassana level, you have to have a, that the strong, very clear, sharp, Awareness. Otherwise, you cannot catch it. As I mentioned from the beginning, because we used to develop different kind of pattern in the world to look outside, depending from outside, go with outside, so like that way. So, but when you come to point to bring your body and mind both together. So in that moment, you start to experience something. That is what called samadhi, or kevalya, or satori, or one point, or one mind. So in that level, you able to understand something beyond this material world. It is can it's it can catch by only the mind because we used to catch everything by hands, you know, with this physical world. But we, we used to see things materially with the name and form. But this underneath this, there is something that giving the space for this everything. That's why this everything can exist. That is what called change. If there is no change, this anything cannot exist. So the you know, physical eye, you know, in the conventionally for this physical body, we cannot grab that change. We, we always grab the solidity. That is what called world. But if you deeply understand how this solidity facilitated from where it come, you start to recognize it come out of the, the change. The change come out of the emptiness. So that when you come to that understanding, so anymore with your Eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. You're not going to experience the solid world the way we experience today. Even though you see, even though conventionally you accept it as something, your mind not going to be there. That is where you gain the total freedom, total emptiness. In that total emptiness, any direction you can move. Anything without precondition, anything you can accept. That is where you're going to experience your liberation. So with that, I bless upon everyone with this good practice. May all of you be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to you. May no difficulties come to you. May no problems come to you. May you also have the patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life. 
during this time period may everyone stay healthy and safe and finally may all of you attain supreme bliss of nibbana sabbhityo vajjantu sabbarogo vinasatu mate bhavattantarayu sukhi digayuku bhava ettavata cha ammi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya sabbe bhuta anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya sabbe satta anumodantu sabba sampatti siddhiya idam me punya kammam asavakkaya vahang hotu sabba dukkha pamunchatu bless you